Hey, hello everyone! So it's a new video and we continue to work towards the build of my RV-10 airplane. And uh, my plans are to actually finish with the uh, section 25-26 completely and move on to the firewall section. Also my good news are that Vans was actually very quick and fast and they shipped to me my backordered parts way sooner than they promised. So initially it was promised to be like a five weeks Instead, I got it like in the middle of the second week already. So I'm good. I have now all my parts for my fuselage kit and I can continue to work and get it all completed. So probably it's time to think about the finishing kit ordering because right now at this time, likely due to the pandemic, uh, there are some delays in those kits. So I guess it's about six to nine months delay. So I have to think about it in advance now to make sure I'm gonna get my finishing kit by the time when my fuselage will be kinda ready so I can put it on the wheels while well, sit inside and make a noises right so let's work but before that I also would like to share with you my thoughts about the um, ballistic recovery chutes, uh, ballistic recovery systems so I was uh, recently thinking about that a lot like arguing cons and pros about getting ballistic chute installed to my um, airplane. Well, I don't want to debate about do you need it or you don't need it because it's own choice and uh, I'm sure there are people who will say, yo, no, you don't need it. You will always land the airplane, someone will say you need it. So no, I'm not trying to convince anyone in anything. Just want to say that in my opinion, I think I will still install it despite I hope I will never ever use it and I'm not planning to fly in um, no icing or in IMC or uh, over like I don't know, over mountains at night but still it's better to have extra choice for me like extra probably extra way of exiting from the situation I was uh, actually studying a market uh, I found four companies offer this product of course the company number one whom I found it's a BRS they're located in the United States great company great products they actually have lots of tons of those different uh, BRS BRS actually it's original name right systems uh, ballistic recovery chute systems and uh, they have a solution for Vans RV10 and for different Vans models well uh, quite expensive I found it's about 25,000 US dollars for my airplane uh, with the same time well it's safety right but uh, that's option number one I found one very interesting company in Russia yeah uh, looking at my accent you probably can uh, understand that my motherland was Russia when I was a kid and uh, moved to Canada so yeah it's uh, in Russia I was surprised to find the company there they also producing very interesting uh, ballistic recovery um, uh, system but actually that system is quite different from what BRS offers like BRS I guess they have like a rocket which launches out of the airplane and opens the chute while the company in Russia that system is actually using a little bit different technique and I'm not sure what the technique is but instead of rocketing it out it actually using like some pyrotechnic which actually pushes it pushes it down out so for that system you need to actually work on the um, improving the strength of your uh, bottom skin and bottom part and I also found two companies in Europe and it's also interesting prices are all different I'm debating I'm now like kind of looking into that reading trying to understand more about it I'm not in rush to purchase it right now but I'm thinking that in the near near future I will probably pull a trigger and pick one and, and, and buy it uh, but uh, yeah I'm just trying to learn first of all how easy or difficult to install it by myself will I need some help from someone else who is like let's say structural engineer in airplanes because well it's a it's something very serious right and it's not in the advanced plans uh, support from a company of course of course 
how often I need to repack it. Of course, how often it opens, at what altitude minimum it opens, at what speed it opens, like lots, lots of information which I'm now trying to gather all together, but I'll share with you my thoughts about it. But for now, less talking, more work. Let's do it. Я в клетке, я в клетке. Вот эту давай в сторону делать. В клетке. Стоп, медленно. Подожди. Нет, 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 подожди. Давай, поехали медленно. Помедленно. Я в клетке, я в клетке. Помедленнее, медленнее нажимай, плавней. Молодец. All right, so riveting of the meat fuselage part, the skins on the bottom has been completed. Well, it was quite big task for me and uh, my father helped me with that. And well, still it's, it's lots of rivets, lots of work and lots of places where you just cannot simply easily get with a bucking bar. But so far so good, it's done, it's ready. And the next step will be to continue to work on the firewall part. So getting ready for that and looking forward to, forward to start to do that. So it's time now to work on the firewall actually section and I already prepared uh, all my parts. I found that actually all of them are much drilled, which is really good uh, sign. So no orange sticker or orange uh, marker uh, on any of the parts. So now what I decided to do is first to get all the bird all prepared. Uh, since match drilling will not be required here, I will do a click in and I'll see for the first time how it's going to look like without a match drilling actually the assembly. And after that I'll continue and go ahead with the priming of the parts except the stainless steel parts, which are this box and the firewall itself. Those parts are stainless steel so there is no need to prime them.
Well, so far we are approaching the end of today's video. Well, uh, I haven't showed you, but um, they missed that moment to record, but that uh, rudder pedal brace um, riveting actually was a pain, really pain. Uh, because I couldn't find the proper head, like proper mushroom head for my gun, for my rivet gun just to rivet it here. So I actually ended up with using that mushroom head, which is like swivel head and finally went with that. But even though I see a little bit banded like this side, so it's like a little bit off. I don't know how critical is that, hopefully not, but we will see. For now, that's it. We just... Uh, I was about to say riveting. We're bolting the vents in place and that's basically it for my um, for, for my firewall assembly. The next will be the following assembly. I, I guess it already goes with the forward part of the spar uh, and uh, yeah, that's, that's how it is. So for now that's it. Uh, that's it. In overall it was not that hard to rivet. Well, obviously band uh, 8 on my finger obviously because this metal is super sharp so be careful when you work with the uh, firewall because this uh, stainless steel is super sharp and I was like paying much attention to that at all time but at the very end I, I relaxed and well basically just scratched my finger a bit but it's fine so far it looks not so bad to me yeah it's like bare metal looks nice lots of rivets quite heavy construction not super heavy bottom part is still like flexing while the whole this part is kind of well it's anyway there are lots of lots of the re uh, reinforcement uh, plates on the back side so it's kind of it's kind of rugged yeah that's it that's all for today i guess uh, that's it that's all for this video and i see you in the next video don't forget to subscribe have a good one and happy easter bye